Over the last week, Kia, Hyundai, and Tesla recalled more than 1.3 million vehicles due to a variety of different reasons. And the thing is that what we're seeing now with Hyundai, Kia, and Tesla, these are not one-off issues. The reality is tens of millions of cars are recalled every single year. And the unfortunate thing is that these recalls are gonna end up happening more and more often. So then that begs the important question of what happens if you have a car that's listed on Turo and that car has a recall? What do you end up doing and what ends up happening to you and your vehicle. So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video. I'm going to be breaking down what happens if your car has an open recall whenever it's listed on the Turo platform. I'm going to be breaking down some of the steps that you have to take as well as some really bad worst case scenarios that you should definitely be aware of. So let's get started. Now a recall is issued whenever a manufacturer or alternatively the NHTSA determines that a vehicle, equipment associated with the vehicle, a car seat or a tire creates unreasonable safety risk or fails to meet the minimum safety requirement. A recall can be literally anything. It could be something as simple as your trunk not latching properly a portion of the time, or it could be something as severe as an airbag going off and shoving debris into your face. But the one thing that all recalls have in common, regardless of the severity of that recall, is that you cannot rent a car out on Turo if it has an open recall. In fact, you can't rent out a car anywhere with an open recall, regardless of whether you're operating through Turo, get around hire car, or through an independent rental car company. In 2015, a piece of legislation was passed called the Rachel and Jacqueline Hawk Safe Rental Car Act. Jacqueline and Rachel were killed in California whenever their rental car was caught on fire. This rental car had an open recall and ultimately this unfortunate death could have been prevented. In response to this happening, legislators passed this bill, which ultimately prohibited any rental car agency from renting out a car with an open recall. Basically, how this piece of legislation works is that once an open recall is announced, you have 24 hours to get this car out of a renter's hands and into your possession or to make it deactive in your fleet. And then you must get that recall address before renting that car back out. Interestingly enough, for a long time, Turo really didn't follow this rule to an absolute T. And I believe that the reason is, is because technically speaking, if you are running a car sharing fleet, you are not a rental car company. You are just a person with a car who is loaning your car out to another person in exchange for money. So because of this, for a while, Turo didn't really actively govern this rule. So there were cars that were on the Turo platform that had an open recall that were actively getting rented out. But over the last couple of years, Turo has rightfully so cracked down on this rule and they now closely regulate recalls. And because of that, you cannot have a car with an open recall on Turo and Turo will catch it and they will delist that car until that recall is resolved. But the good thing here is that nine times out of 10, if you have an open recall on your car, it is going to be a breeze to fix. You're simply notified that the recall exists. You then go to an authorized dealership. They fix the recall for free and then bada bing, bada boom, you're done. The car is back on the platform. But the unfortunate 10% of the time is a much, much different experience. And this is the type of experience that you need to be aware of. Now, before we dig into this aspect of the equation, if you guys could do me a huge favor and if you could hit the like button and hit the notification bell for the YouTube algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it. This helps my channel grow because it helps that YouTube know that you guys are enjoying my content and thus YouTube pushes my content out to a new audience. Additionally, I do have a private Patreon group where we talk all things Turo. And if you guys are interested in checking out my car sharing masterclass, you can use the code recall in order to get $25 off of that course. Now, like I mentioned a few moments ago, whenever you have a open recall on your car, Turo will number one, deactivate that car. They'll delist it and they'll tell you, hey, you need to get it fixed. Once you get it fixed, we'll reactivate your car and you'll be good to go. So then you take the car to the dealership, you get it fixed, you let Turo know, and then you are ready to go. But like I mentioned, there are a few exceptions to this process and those exceptions come into play whenever there isn't an open fix for that recall. Meaning the manufacturer knows that there's an issue with this car, but they actually don't know how to fix it. The thing is, is that if you have an open recall and there isn't a fix for that open recall, then there's no way to resolve the recall, which means there's no way to get your car relisted on Turo, which means that you are kind of stuck with one option. And that option is to keep your car delisted on the Turo platform until there is an active fix for the recall that you're dealing with. This is something that is honestly a worst case scenario. And for Turo hosts, it is something that can be very, very bad depending on what type of car you're dealing with and what recall you're dealing with 
with as well. Because whenever there isn't a fix for a recall, this can sometimes take a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, or in some extreme cases, a couple of years. This is actually something that people are dealing with as we speak with Ford. You see, Ford recently released a recall for their 2021 and 2022 Ford Escapes, as well as their Ford Bronco Sports. The recall is due to the electronic brake booster failing. And the problem is, is that though Ford knows what the issue is, they don't exactly know how to fix it. So there isn't currently a resolution for the recall. So anybody that purchased brand new Ford Bronco Sports for the Turo platform in the last couple of months, well, they're not allowed to rent those cars out. And those cars are instead having to sit, they can't be rented, which means that if you financed a bunch of these cars, you could be in a really bad spot. So the gist here is, is that if you have a car that has an open recall and that car is on the Turo platform and there isn't a fix for that open recall, well, you just simply can't rent out the car. Now, I oftentimes see on like Facebook groups or Reddit posts of people who have a Turo car that has an open recall with no fix available at the moment. And the question always is something along the lines of, well, there has to be something that we can do. It's not my fault that there isn't a fix for this recall. Can't Turo make an exception? And the answer is unfortunately no, they really, really can't because it's simply the law. They have to follow the law. And to be honest, they have to follow safety standards. There is a real big liability risk whenever you're renting a car with a known issue. And not only does Turo take risk in that, but so do you as the host. And so though I do agree that it's definitely frustrating whenever a car has an open recall and thus you can't rent out that car on Turo, it ultimately is for the safety of everybody, including you. So whenever a car doesn't have a fix, you just simply have to either option A, sell that car, or option B, sit and wait until the fix is available. Now here's what I typically do if one of my cars has an open recall, and here's what I would do if one of my cars had an open recall with no current resolution. Number one is the moment I find out that a recall is happening, I contact my local dealership ASAP and I arrange for the car to get dropped off. This is step number one because you want to make sure to get the issue fixed as soon as humanly possible. The sooner the better when it comes to recalls. Whenever you get your car fixed, you will need to have to wait for the database to be updated with the fact that your car was fixed with this recall, but once that happens, you can contact Turo and they'll relist your vehicle. It really is a simple process, though for first time Turo hosts, it can come off as a bit daunting. If the recall you're currently dealing with doesn't have a resolution like the Ford Bronco, then I would talk to the Ford dealership and see when they expect to have it. They should have a decent idea of some sort of time frame, whether it be a couple of weeks, a couple of months, or a couple of years. Now, I know what you guys may be thinking. The idea of a couple of years for a recall to be addressed sounds totally far-fetched, but it actually isn't. Back in the day, I used to own a Mercedes-Benz C300 that I rented out on Turo, and it was unfortunately a victim of the Takata Air bag recall, which didn't have a fix for multiple years. As a result, this car could not be rented out on Turo, and I ultimately ended up selling the car because I had no use for it anymore. And really from there, once you get your answer from the dealership of how long it will take to get the recalls addressed, well, now it's time to decide what you as a host want to do. Do you want to sit on this car until the recall can be fixed? Do you want to sell the car and use the money to buy a car that can actually get rented out? Or do you simply want to use the car as a personal vehicle? There really isn't any right or wrong answer answer to this question it all depends on your goals, your finances, and what car you're talking about. For me, if I was renting out a car that I personally like to drive and I enjoyed owning, then I would probably just keep the car and use it as a personal vehicle. But if it was a car that I bought 100% for Turo and I have no use for it in my personal life, well, I would definitely just sell it and buy a car that can get rented out today. Unfortunately, when it comes to recalls, there is no way around it other than simply getting the recall fixed. Now, like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I wanted to make this video today because I think open recalls more than ever is a really applicable conversation in the context of Turo. The reality is there's been a lot of recalls recently between the new ones with Hyundai and Kia, between the ones with Tesla, which Teslas are like all over the Turo platform, as well as the new ones with the Ford Bronco, which is a car that I personally thought would be a good choice for Turo, but now it doesn't seem to be the case. There are simply a lot of recalls that could have a pretty significant impact on Turo hosts all over the country. So I think that some of the steps that you can take if you have an open recall and what you need to be aware of, these are really important so that you can be a more educated Turo host. Like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.